thank you all for the time. As, uh, as Michael mentioned, my name is John Larisha. Um, I think about sales all the time. I, I think about sales since I was paper boy in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, and I think about it every day today. And AI both excites me and it terrifies me with regard to the impact to, to sales. And so from a, <clears throat> a standpoint of, originally I was gonna do this as death of a salesman, but none of the folks in my office understood what that is. It speaks volumes about the, uh, the educational system. So I mentioned to, to Teddy, who's my sales guy, that, that the talk was gonna be about the, uh, the coming extinction of the salesperson, and he was appalled, right? And he's a classic sales guy. He's like, sales guys are heroes. They're our clients, we, we venerate them, we're here to help them, uh, and by extension, I, Teddy, as a sales guy, I'm a hero. And, and in, he was my own personal chat GPT and started giving me examples. And so he started with the Henry Ford. And he was like, yes, he was great uh, <clears throat> manufacturing, uh, visionary, but ultimately he had to sell mobility to the masses. So Henry Ford is, is there along with, with Teddy Helfrich. And then to, to make it a little more relevant, it's like Mary Kay. She went out there and she was all about selling to sellers, right? And how she brought it out into the living rooms and empowered many women, many men, to earn their pink Cadillac that, uh, that Henry Ford would have been quite proud of. And then he's like, well, we're going out to Napa, so let's think about you know, the modern greatest salesman, <clears throat> which is Steve Jobs, where you know, he now has got us addicted to this thing in our pocket that does absolutely everything. Like, that's all fine, right? That's all fine and good, makes sense, all good examples. But I think a lot of folks <clears throat> also think about the first apple that was sold and the snake, right? I mean, just think about how you feel when you are sold something. Do we feel good about it? I mean, think about the language that we have around sales. I was sold some bill of goods. I was sold up the river. It's not a positive verb, right? <clears throat> think about the stereotypes of a salesperson. Cheap suit, <laughs> right? So these are all the things that come to mind with sales. And I'm quite certain that out in your community and all the users of Welcome Home aren't this way. But there's an undercurrent to it, right? That, that sales has a tone to it. And so this is what we're fighting against. This is what AI is here to be channeled for good. Because while we all hate to be sold, all of us love to buy, right? That, that makes us really excited. We love to educate ourselves. We like to take power. We like to figure out what we want and need and reach out and grab it. And machines are really good at helping us buy stuff. They just are. Paul detailed many of them. Amazon is constantly proposing new things for me to buy. And they're very good at telling me what I need next. And so the question is, for all of us, what can machines help to make this a buying experience rather than a selling experience for senior services? And so the approach that, that have taken, or we've taken, is we wanna look at others, we wanna look at our consumers, and then we wanna look at what our sales team are doing. So that's the approach that, that we go about every single day. Now, let me just start with looking at others. <clears throat> so the travel industry, the first trip that my family took on Eastern Airlines down to Walt Disney World in 1979 was the first and only time my mother has used a travel agent. In 1979, travel within the United States was 1.5% of GDP. And there were 300,000 travel agents in America. Travel now in the United States is 4%, and there are somewhere around 50,000 travel agents. Because machines and the power of buyers has taken it over. AI is a fancy term, right? But at the end of the day, it's what can machines do, especially smart machines, better? Has anyone here booked this trip using a travel agent? I can't imagine, right? 
all right, travel is, is, is not a big ticket item enough, it's not exciting enough, it doesn't have any resonance or relevance to us. Okay, the fastest brand in automotive today is Tesla. Does anyone own a Tesla? I can't see anyways, I own a Tesla for what it's worth. You buy it online, right? There is none of the polyester suit, right? There is the station that you, the service station you go and you pick it up. You buy a Tesla. The fastest growing channel for buying cars is in a dealership. It's Carvana and something called Vroom, which I'll talk about in a second, that I never even heard about, right? <clears throat> Zillow now is bundling up packaged homes. Now, they're not necessarily single family homes that are nice bungalows and the like, it's more condos, but people are spending a million dollars buying a home online. All right, great. Big ticket is being bought rather than sold. We have an emotional sale. Unquestionably, talking to a family is incredibly complex and incredibly emotional. Well, you can get plastic surgery bought and scheduled online. You can. I, of course, don't have to worry about that. I'm, I'm a vision. Um, therapy, right? You can buy your therapy. You could pick your therapist. You could start your therapy. I am a 53-year-old man. I am offered therapy and all kinds of drugs often because the machines are very smart. And I have two sets of twins. That wasn't an act of God. It took a lot of IVF. You now can buy IVF, which is an incredibly emotional journey online. So all of that is happening now, and all of it is getting better. TripAdvisor knows exactly what I want to do on a vacation and is serving it up. Again, if the bots know that I'm a 53-year-old man and all of the different maladies that I have and how they can solve it. <clears throat> and so the key is for us to kind of tear down, and what all of these companies have done is tear down the sales process and say, what can the machine do better? And what is inherently human? And that's where we want to focus the human beings. So let's start with our consumers. Um, I mean, we have already talked a lot about the reality. I don't know if ChatGPT or my marketing team came up with those photos. Um, but they're already on our doorsteps, right? They're wealthier. They're worldlier, they're more educated, they're more demanding, they have shopped for our product and service already in many cases, and they are more tech savvy. So that's who this consumer is. So I mentioned my mother, right? She falls in the, the now bucket, but she is not a long boarder. She is a 79-year-old woman that lives in Hubbard, Ohio on seven acres in a log cabin. When she last bought a car, she used Vroom, which I never even heard about. So that's what they're doing. That's the, the changing face of our consumer. She's 79. This isn't my kids. She did the research. She started down a path. She thought she was going to get the exact same car that she got before. The machine provided her better options, and she ended up getting a Subaru, and it was shipped to her house. And she said, I'd never do, that, do it differently again. I'll never talk to another salesperson again. But there are humans involved. Someone had to hand her the keys. Someone had to make her feel good about the experience after the fact. But they're starting to tear it down. And my mom is not that different than me. And I am going to be on the journey with her when she decides to look for senior living. And I'm not going to change my approach because now I'm doing senior living. And so that's what I think that we need to constantly think about as to what do we want to take apart and where do we want to augment and where do we want the human being to really be a human being. Now, we're looking at the data all the time and I suspect that you see it as well. New inquiries, 70% of them are now coming through digital channels. Pre-pandemic, that was somewhere around 52%. The curve got kinked. The curve got kinked in every industry, but it's not going back. Right? This is how 
people like me <laughs> and folks like my mom on the left now shop. We also are looking as to how much time they're spending on online, and it's four times as much as it was just five years ago. They are much more engaged. They're spending more time. They're doing more downloads. They're reading more articles. They're visiting more websites. And they're also starting earlier. So that's the face of the consumer. And all of this is going to be more. And the current approach right now, quite honestly, isn't sustainable. The number of new leads that we're getting, which is incredibly encouraging to me for all operators, is setting records every single month, we're getting more and more leads. And all of it is funneling onto the pinhead of this poor sales director who has to do all of this to a consumer that doesn't necessarily want or need that person to do it all. And so I think that's where we have to start to think as to what are all the different steps and where could it be augmented by AI to allow the salesperson to be different. Because the punchline is, I agree with all of you, they're never going away, but it is going to be an evolution. And in some cases, it's going to be a revolution. In independent living, we already are seeing some that have minimal involvement of a salesperson in a single community. They're covering multiple campuses, and they are engaging residents to do the tours. They're preparing the residents, and they're more of an orchestrator or, or conductor of the orchestra as opposed to the one-on-one. -on -one. So given that, we then wanted to look <clears throat> at what our teams are doing, right? And the short answer is the teams are doing a lot. This is a word cloud. I'm sure you guys have done word clouds. The size of the, 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 the word is, is how often it's mentioned. So I'm fortunate enough to have 2,000 different communities that, that are on Welcome Home, and we're able to stare into their data. And there's roughly 25 million records across those 2,000 operators of, of activities that have occurred over the past you know, 7 to, to 17 years. And this is what the teams are doing. This is what the teams are doing. Again, 25 million different activity rows across those things. They're incredibly busy. But stare at this, right? How many of this needs a human being to do all of it? We've estimated anywhere between 40 and 60% of it is relatively low value. And not only does it take time, but it takes energy. We've sat, I mean, I started working in senior living on a consulting basis 15 years ago, and fortunately this isn't the case anymore, but it's, it's insidious throughout it, where someone would sit, it's like, I need to call John LaRiche about his mom, Audrey and Erie. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get John's number, and then I'm gonna call. And after I'm gonna call, I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna write the notes about what I just said to John, and I'm gonna tell myself in the future, and my boss, that I did that call, and I'm gonna tell myself that I'm gonna have to call someone else. None of that has to be the reality, right? AI can, can make all of this so much more efficient. So I, as a sales director, am in the moment. I'm sitting there engaged. I'm not worrying about the notes because I have the notes being taken. I have things being transcribed. I'm not worried about thinking about what to do next because AI is scraping through those notes and giving me recommendations to do what to do next. It doesn't mean that I necessarily have to take it. This is never going to be a process. This is never right going to be a process where I go and I add, OK, I want room 117 in memory care for my mom into my basket. It's, it's just foolhardy. But there are so many ways that the sales director, who has 110 prospects and 500 different influencers and 1,000 different referrers, can streamline and engage on what he or she needs to engage on. So as we think about where we can go, it really is tying, tearing down all of the different steps. So if you think about refer development, so refer development is what obviously we want all of our sales directors and community relations directors to do to get out of the building. So what's the, the, the process? Just basic, right? First you have to prioritize 
what the refers you want to, to see. Then you have to figure out what their, their key touch points and, and hot buttons are. <clears throat> you need to route out your drive. You need to have the meeting. You need to take the notes. You need to record it and set next steps. I would argue <laughs> there are two or three steps there that require the human being. And quite honestly, if you have an autonomous Tesla, you don't even need to do the drive. But the prioritization of who to see can easily be done by AI. It's being done today by AI. You could look at who historically has referred, how successful those referrers are. You could look at their discharge volume. If they're a medical professional, you could look at their overall patient load to say who is higher or lower value to you. AI can prioritize that. AI can put it on a map to route it out. AI can suggest, based on the profile and the notes of your prior meetings with them and who else they've said, what are the, the topics that you want to address with them. AI can do virtually everything except get you there and get you in the room. And that's not a bad thing. If I said that in, instead you had an MIT grad student that's going to sit there and do all the work for you and then hand you the notes so you're prepped, it wouldn't be scary. And so that's the mindset that I think all of us need to take, which is, okay, fine. Our sales directors just need to be in the room, prepped, being human, and selling what we have to offer that makes the life of a senior much better in our community versus not. The kicker is, to get through college, I worked filling out of stocks for this company called Acosta. So anomaly, I was a salesperson because I'd go and talk to the store managers at the Giant Eagles and the Piggly Wigglies of the world. And all of this existed. There was an algorithm that told me when the Cocoa Puffs were out of stock. And it told me when I was going to hit that Piggly Wiggly. And so it told me that to hit that Piggly Wiggly next to that Giant Eagle in that order. And when it was done, it was done. And the algorithm could tell that it was now full. That was 1989. Right? All of this is here and in front of us. And so, you know, ultimately, what, what I think we want to do is have a word cloud that starts to look like this, right? Where, where tours, where home visits, where refer meetings and development is by far the greatest. The other stuff doesn't necessarily go off, right? Yes, absolutely, some of the, the, the bullets fell off entirely because it's busy work, right? It takes time, it takes energy. It's, it's, it's not in the highest and best use, right? Some of it is much more efficient, some of it's much more effective. But the key question is, are we all ready? Because the wave of seniors that we need to handle in the future can't be done effectively or efficiently in what we have today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John.